Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is January 9th, 2017. I am Rollo McFlugel and with me is Slappy Jones 2 and we are both of McFlugel.com. Show notes page for tonight's episode is McFlugel.com slash 21. Before we get started, as I've been announcing the last few weeks, uh, I set up a GoFundMe campaign to send Bill Crystal, who loves war, especially the Iraq war, on a vacation to see his handiwork. So the uh, GoFundMe campaign is to send him to Iraq on a vacation. Of course, they'll never take us up on that offer. So any money that we raise in the GoFundMe campaign will be donated to antiwar.com for the fantastic work that they do. So check out mcflugel.com slash vacation for more information or check out the show notes page. Links will be there. So with that, I'll hand it off to Slappy and he will introduce the topic. Thanks, Rallo, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, today we're going to talk about the recent BLN kidnapping, or at least that's what it's called. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, go Google BLN kidnapping and you can see the video. But really what we want to talk about isn't so much the video but the reaction to the video and I think it's <laughs> it's it's not something to laugh about because it was a serious crime and this kid probably was terrified but the reaction is a little ridiculous I think on both sides and I think Rallo agrees with me so Rallo I'll pass it off to you um, let's what do you think about these uh, BLM kidnapping even just the title blm kidnapping right it's it's a little bit loaded of a of a title but at the same time it's it's kind of uh ironic that uh or fitting more not ironic it's fitting almost to say that that that's what it got labeled as because you know a lot of the people the the social justice warriors the really uh i'll say extremist of the black lives matter people and I don't I don't mean to paint anyone everyone who associates with the black lives matter movement with you know the crazy you know racists out there I think there's plenty of people that that use it as a platform to to show that you know maybe uh, institutionally we're not where we should be as far as race relations go especially um, well, in particularly with the police um, but for the more extremist ones, the ones that say that all white people are racist and anything bad happens, they say, oh, look at look, it's it's white racism. It's because of Trump. And they they just paint with really broad brushes without really knowing any facts about anything or even if the, the stories that they're complaining about are true. Um, it got, you know, that it got pointed right back at them because immediately because it was for black people against one white guy that immediately got labeled a Black Lives Matters kidnapping. Uh, whether or not these, I, I don't even know if these people, I think they had some association with Black Lives Matters or at least they had supported it at some point in some fashion, probably not that much. But it's, it's just, it's interesting that, uh, you know, what they, what they complain about so often and, and so much that it got directed at them. And then, you know, they, they obviously didn't <laughs> appreciate it very much. And then at the same time, for the people dubbing it the Black Lives Matter kidnapping, I, I mean, what are you doing? You, you're flipping out that anytime anything remotely bad happens – that people blame it on Trump and, you know, white racism and everything else and privilege. You say, that's not, you know, that's ridiculous. That's racist. <laughs> you know, the, you know the, the, it's, it's such obvious hypocrisy and that's, it's just reactionary movements, both the social justice warriors and the black lives matter, the extremist black lives matter movement and the alt-right movement are just reactionary movements against basically each other and everything they do it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy of, of of it so it's just this stupid little cycle where they accuse each other of doing the same thing that they do themselves and then <laughs> they become their own they become the thing that they hate yeah uh, yeah I, I mean the the worst part well i don't know the worst part but one of the things that bothered me about this was i saw that video 
uh, around when it first came out. I, I was online or something, and I, I saw it pop up. So I watched the video. And uh, I remember some people afterwards were saying, because uh, I, I think the po the DA or one of the police chiefs in Chicago, someone said something like, we're not sure if it's a hate crime. Uh, it may have just been stupidity or something, something along those lines. And people were up in arms about that, saying, this has to be a hate crime. He said, F Trump and F white people. This is a hate crime. If this were reversed, it would definitely be a hate crime. But what, what I think is maybe ironic about that is and uh, I'll label all the I'll label those people people of the alt right or people with that kind of bend um, is they always say they don't like hate crimes a crime is a crime every crime is a hate crime if I punch someone in the face it should be punished as punching someone in the face not an additional penalty penalty because he called him a certain name before he punched him in the face it's still the same crime but then when this happens they're all up in arms saying it should be a hate crime so. It's kind of funny that on one end, these people will argue saying there is no such thing as a hate crime or every crime is a hate crime. So why are we throwing extra penalties at it? But then when these black people attack a white guy, it's this should be a hate crime. This should be a hate crime. But uh, my stance is it should not be a hate crime because every crime should be judged as as a crime that it is. Well, you got to give them a taste of their own medicine. But then yeah, yeah, yeah. once you give them a taste of their own medicine, they're going to turn back and say, well, we got to give them a taste. Of so until you until one side finally says enough, you're just going to keep the cycle going. <laughs> Not to sound too hippie-ish, but until there isn't two sides, until we're all just right. realize we're all individuals and there isn't a black versus white, we're all just in this kind of thing together here, um, there's probably going to be problems. And, of course, our lovely government, our dear leaders – love to separate us and love to pit one side against the other and create sides and create problems. And uh, so as long as we have this big government and as long as we trust our government, we're always going to have these issues. Right. And then on top of that, you have a, an extremely biased media who, when they report something like this, they, you know, very cautiously refuse, you know, very careful about what they say. And I, I don't mean to, and this is where this is where I I said in in the show notes page something like you know the, the alt right occasionally has good points, um, like with the media. So the media portrays this as they they don't really mention race when it's black people against white people, or if it's you know the other way around, they it's all they talk about. Um, I forget where I was going to go with this now. Uh, my mind just went blank. Uh, oh, but on on Twitter when it, when it happened, I mean. You know, you have the hashtags to for trending things for certain topics so people can see what other people are talking about. And Twitter did not autocomplete the BLM kidnapping hashtag. Where it's like, and you know, they can do whatever they want. Obviously, they're they're a private business, but it just showed the showed some real hypocrisy because anything about in in the other direction, especially things about Trump, and you know, I have as if you've ever listened to anything we've we've said on this podcast or read anything we've written, we do not like Donald Trump at all. But I mean, Twitter and the mainstream media, they are, have no problem with spreading, you know, any sort of falsehood and rumor and lie about Donald Trump or, or anyone associated with, with that uh, political opinion. So, which is really probably why Trump won the election too. It's all right. Because Trump offers nothing. I yeah. mean, he provides nothing other than being very blunt with things he said. Right. And uh, I think that resonates with people. They're tired of being lied to and they're tired of not, – not that Trump's this honest guy, but right. he talks very straightforward. He's very plain. And it's he's funny because he's, he's like the conservative hero now and doesn't even represent conservative values. <laughs> I can't all. even think of a single conservative thing he has said. I mean, I'm sure there's something because he has his handlers and his coaches who tell him what to say. But as far as I've known about Donald Trump, he's never really – I don't think he's ever been considered conservative. No, certainly not. Um, um, I, thought, I thought it was funny that a guy like uh, Rush Limbaugh was totally backing Donald Trump um, right. and, and, you know – the Rush Limbaugh from 15 years ago would have been calling him a leftist or whatever he calls people. Absolutely. So when Twitter does that kind of, and the mainstream media and other social media outlets, they do this kind of stuff. 
it only emboldens the other side. So when you have, you know, when they when they black out the this hashtag, the alt right can say, "Look at this! Look at this! See, it's against us! It's against us!" And it just to that when whenever anyone when there's a perceived injustice against you, it usually makes people believe that they're right. Mm-hmm. And then when and when it gets doubled down, then you know that means I'm even more right. And so it just makes them more fiery and and makes them push it more and more and more and more. So it's so if you just took a step back and tried to say, hey, let's act, actually have some some journalism here, or let's actually look at the case and and what happened. Maybe we could have clearer heads when when looking at this stuff instead of just you know pointing the finger because and then that's the other thing that drives me nuts is that you have a this this video that comes out and then the people on the I, I keep referring to them as the alt right which there's a lot that are like this because this, these are the people I've been interacting with <laughs> in the last few days with with their interesting views on things so I'm I'm referring to them but it's it's more than just them. Um, I lost my train of thought again. I, mean, I can't stay. Where's Rallo tonight? I don't know. Um, I, I guess since we're, unless you get your thought, I just yeah, want to ahead. take this to a next step. We were talking before we went on the air. I think it's um, I don't I don't know if it's human nature or or just maybe the society we grow up in, or we all go to the same types of schools. I know there's private and public and all other ones, but it's all generally the same. <laughs> But it's funny how this happens and people will say it's Black Lives Matter or see Black Lives Matter, you guys are black people and you're arguing for something and a black guy did a bad thing, so you're all bad. Uh, and I kind of see the same thing when we talk about the Middle East. Um, forget the fact that all through time you can look back at World War, you know, any war really, that any country has ever been involved in there's propaganda involved. And we can look back at um, how the Germans were monsters in World War II, and uh, obviously the red, the Reds, the Red Scare, and Cold War, and the Vietnamese, the Mir Gook rule, the same with the Koreans. There was all kinds of propaganda against these people, which all today we just think of Germans, Koreans, and Vietnamese as people. But when we were at war with them, we thought they were monsters. Uh, and I think we are probably doing the same thing with the people in the Middle East. And it's very convenient when you can find a video of a this guy from ISIS or, you know, these poor people, um, poor as in not wealthy, using the weapons they have to make a statement, uh, not justifying it in any way at all. But they'll play these videos. And how many people live in the Middle East or at least used to live there before many of them left? Several millions. Um, and you see one guy or one group of guy do something and then we project that on every Arab they're all like to chop off heads and that's the way they act and that's what they do. And um, in fairness, I've never been there, so I don't know what it's like there, but I have met people from there who, when I ask them about it, they don't say, oh yeah, every day we were scared to get our head chopped off. You know, they just kind of talk about it like it's everyday life and the people there are great. And uh, yeah, it's just, I thought it's, maybe you should just think about things a little more. I mean, most people know black people and they're normal people and you interact with them just fine. So there's no reason to think that because this thing happened in Chicago, it means Black Lives Matter is now terrible. Uh, and same with ISIS and uh, the Middle East, just because there's a bad group of guys doing something, trying to get control of whatever they're getting control of and using violence to do it, uh, to say that all Arabs are like that. Just like the stat came out recently that uh, the United States dropped something like 73 bombs per day in 2016 in the Middle East. I don't want to be uh, put into the category of people who want to drop 73 bombs a day on a group of people. I, I hope that's not projected on me. Yeah, and that's that's kind of basically what I wanted to say. Thanks for, for helping me out there. But it what also annoys me, and the same thing, and and using the the example of you know terrorism from the Middle East is a perfect example. Whenever whenever a terrorist attack happens, you always hear the people saying, "Well, where are the Muslims? Where are all the Muslims that are you know apparently peaceful Muslims on this? Uh, they're silent. They're silent on this. So I guess I guess they 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 don't have a big problem with it since they're not saying anything. Why should they have to? I mean, I don't like you said. You hope that. It, it doesn't get projected on you that you support the bombing. 
I mean, most people see the United States as a Christian country, a white, a generally white Christian country. So as a white Christian, I feel no obligation to say every time there's a bomb drop to say, hey, I disagree with that. That's not me. That's not me. I do say that a lot because it's against the status quo and it's and it's against what people normally think. But it's more towards the other Americans that are around me. I don't you know, feel the need to go, you know, send a message across the to the other side of the world and say, hey, by the way, it's not like and and there's no moral hey, obligation for me to do that. Right. But if you do have friends on the other side of the world and you think they'd enjoy our podcast, please send the link. <laughs> yeah. And there's nothing wrong with doing that either, with saying, with co- jumping up and saying, hey, I'm a member of this group just because of the color of my skin and my religion. And just as a way to maybe rally other people that are like me or to, to show some camaraderie with people that don't look like me, then I think that's there's no problem with that. But and to tie this back into the, you know, the the torture video that was in, you know, with the, the Black Lives Matter kidnapping. No black person is obligated to jump up and say, I disagree with this or explicitly say it because nobody is, a, is in favor of, unless, nobody, unless you, in favor of unless that. you've, and, th- and actually, you know what, there, there are people out there, um, that I do think incited this kind of stuff, like the extremists I, I was talking about earlier. I think those people do have some obligation to, to step up and say either, uh, hey, you know what? This is exactly what I was looking for. Or to say, hey, um, we should really cool it with the stuff we say because people listen and every once in a while someone might actually you know, act out on the stuff that, that we say. So, But the vast majority of people, the vast majority of people are not calling for violence like that. So to act like that they're under some moral obligation to you know, denounce violence that we know that 99.9% of people think is absolutely abhorrent and horrible. I mean, come on. I mean, is there any group of any, and I'm, maybe you can find an individual somewhere on Twitter, but is there any group of people or um, even maybe even an individual who said, yeah, this is a good thing about the kidnapping that you're I, aware of? I mean, I haven't been looking that hard for it, but I haven't, I mean, but it's one of those things where if someone did say that, then yeah, they'd be jumping all over. But, but even the people that do, they're, they're really loose with what they say and, and it's gives it the, I, I, I don't I want to mean, Hey, here you go. It's like that guy from Think Progress, right? Who, who had that little article where he said he was scared of his plumber right. because his plumber was a white guy, middle class. And he said, the guy, he said the guy was pleasant. He was professional. He didn't talk about politics, but given his demographic, he might have voted for Trump, which scares me. It makes me uncomfortable. Um, I think that's a little bit of an overreaction. And yeah, those kind problem. of th- yeah, but those kind of thoughts, and you're putting that out there, and you constantly hear this stuff that like Trump voters are these evil people. Um, that oh, yeah. kind of sinks in. Right. Right. Oh, and if you're saying that, and you're saying that you should fear these people, and and if you if if you know someone voted for Trump, they're they're probably violent and they're out to get you and they're predators and they hate you. And if you're constantly drilling that into someone's head, and then they go out and do something that you know takes care of that problem, then yeah, I think that there's some responsibility that you have on that. For sure, not directly. I mean, you didn't. You weren't the one that did it. And I, I, you know, I don't want it to sound like oh, you can't ever say anything and you know can't use metaphors because someone might take you literally. I mean, come on, we're, we should be adults about this and understand when, you know, someone's advocating for violence and when someone just has a slip of the tongue or, or you know, loose language, it's obvious when the difference is. And it's usually people that are constantly using this kind of language that um, that are the, the, the guilty parties of, of this kind of stuff. So it's, it's obvious <laughs> the kind of person that this is referring to. Mm-hmm. So, with that, do you have any interesting stories on the market for this week? Well, before I get into that, I just want to tell it was kind of interesting that um, I, you know, with the BLM kidnapping, I actually witnessed uh, in person a kidnapping the other day. Oh, let's hear. Uh, but it ended up being all right because he woke up. Do tell. Yeah, yeah, it was a. 
That's how bad the joke was. Yeah, it went over my head. I witnessed a kid napping. Oh, I see. You. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. See, my kids don't nap, so oh. I don't witness the kids napping. Okay, well, um, that kind so of... So that's um, why I didn't get it. Or are you just trying to not embolden me by laughing at uh, my terrible jokes so I don't start trying to do this every podcast? Episode. Yeah, but we, don't, really we don't need any of them. That, that three seconds of silence there was a message. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyway, on that note, I think we covered our BLM kidnapping to clarify, not a kid taking a nap. Um, but do you have any stories on the market for this week? I don't have. Do you have a story? Um, no, other than that, my cell phone uh, contract ran up and uh, Verizon is who I had my cell phone with. They called me to offer me some great deal, uh, which I thought was nice of them. I didn't accept anything yet. Uh, but, uh, it's just a little proactive, uh, incentive in the market. They want to keep my business. I've been with Verizon for a while and, uh, surely pay enough for it. Uh, but now that I'm out of my two-year contract, I have the freedom to go somewhere else and search my rates. So they wanted to get in front of that as soon as possible and gave me a call proactively. And we also do that in my job, um, a new product was released, a new disability insurance product. Anyone who needs disability, please contact us. Um, but a new product came out. So we went back the last three months, and anyone we quoted on the old product, we requoted on the new product, sent it out to people. So maybe there was someone considering getting a policy, uh, and now this new policy is priced better or fits better in their market. It's an opportunity to do something, and uh, nobody forced us to do that. And we did that because we want to let people know it's possible they can lower their rate if they go with the new product. Uh, anyone who knows anything about the insurance industry, it's commission driven. So if I'm commission driven, why am I sending out notices to people that they can lower their premiums? It doesn't seem to make sense if you're one of those people who hate the market, yet we provide a service and our customers value that service and they appreciate that we let them know uh, because happy clients are return customers for sure. So that's just a little note I just thought of on the fly. Not the greatest, but something that happens in the market all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know how this is going to be played out because I'm going to do some editing, but uh, it was right after I told that apparently horrible joke, uh, my internet browser. Yeah, even the computer shut down on the <laughs> <laughs> I learned my. I didn't learn my lesson at all. It's, I'm probably going to do this more often now. Good. It's, it's emboldened me. Um, so with that, uh, appreciate everyone listening. Be sure to check out the show notes page, mcflugel.com slash 21, where you will find links to subscribe to us. We are on iTunes and Stitcher. You can also subscribe to our email list where you will be notified of any new articles and podcasts that we post. Also, check us out on Facebook. Like us there, facebook.com slash McFlugel. And follow us both on Twitter. We like to discuss, debate, talk. Um, so please, fire off any questions and comments you have for us. We appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll catch you next week. All right. Have a good one. Peace.